Welcome to Turning Tuesday. This week, I'm giving you the ending up front. This is the stump this bowl originated from. It was a beautiful river she-oak on the shores of the Kajigong River in Mudgee. The she-oak, unfortunately, the top of the tree had started to die off from borer bugs, and as a result, it was removed. Not wanting to waste such an opportunity and a beautiful tree, I chose to give this section of the tree a second chance at life. This is the first sharpen of 14. I underestimated just how dense and hard Casuarina is. This one beat me up for a while, don't worry, not all sharpens were included in the video, so I'm not going to make you be bored through that. But yeah, this was some very hard wood, and it definitely earned its place as one of Australia's hardest. This piece of wood specifically has been sitting on my shelf for about two years. Unlike a pirate map, X does not mark the spot on this one. The original X was while I was trying to take the corners off with the chainsaw, and I noticed that the back of it was not that square, not very flat, and so it just didn't quite work for what I was aiming for. So, when I mounted on the lathe originally, I moved it across with a spur drive, and I'm reusing the same hole, I just dug it out, to put the woodworm in. So now I am focusing on getting some balance and you're about to witness the balance is not good. So as you can see, I'm giving a quick rotate around and you'll notice it keeps swinging down to that bottom point. Yes, that's very out of round. So I am at the slowest the lathe will go and as you can tell, it's still got a nice rock and it is beating the absolute crap out of me. So I am here in about five times speed and it still feels really, really slow. So I'm trying to bump it up a little bit. I've taken it up to about 350 there and it's helped a little bit. But as you can see, I'm definitely in for a bit of a rodeo. Or as other people may call it, rodeo. Either way, get up cowboy, this is gonna hurt. I'm editing this video a week after turning and I am still hurting from this beating. So for the first two days, my back was absolutely in agony. And after that, it's just down to a dull roar. I don't think I've done any damage, but it's not feeling pleasant. So right now, all I'm doing is just trying to get the sides in, and here we go, up to the second sharpen already. So you may notice here I'm using the Savannah Pro Grind system on a Sherwood low speed grinder. That's a 180 grit CBN wheel. I like the CBN wheels because they don't shrink in size over time and they just are really quick to get a nice edge on. And as you can tell it's already starting to get a better cut on that base quick sharpen and off we go and as you can see the lathe is still rocking at least I'm making some progress here so I'll have a quick stop, have a look, see what it's doing with the balance, and yeah, just got to grip my teeth and get through it. Everybody hurts sometimes. As you may notice, I'm focusing on trying to get a nice flat base on it, because then I'll be able to at least mark the cannon spot as well as 
know where I'm going with the bowl, what kind of foot I can put on it, and what kind of details I can start focusing on. So step one was get down past all the bark wonkiness and then I would come back and start focusing on getting a nice edge on it. As you can see, I'm just doing a little bit of a dig deeper and see just how far I've got to go so that I can get past that bar. Right now, I'm pretty satisfied with where I'm at, so I'm going to start moving up the side walls. Most of the wonkiness of this piece was coming from that base. As you can see, I've just done a quick mark there and I'm gonna try and push it in and get past most of that outage there. So, as you can see, I've got a nice cut from where the chainsaw was that's created a nice diagonal. And I'm just trying to slowly take it in and work it out. It's not the prettiest, but it's definitely getting towards where I needed it to get. I decided to flatten the face a bit more because I didn't like just how much of the bark inclusion was still there. As you can hear, that pop, 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 pop is just how off center it still is. So I decided to come in a little bit and cut up towards it. Now I'm having a quick look and I'm trying to make that flat spot a bit more visible to my eye while it's spinning. So I just coloured it in with a pencil and I can actually see that dark line as it's going around. As you can see, it's still nowhere near round up on that top edge there. And yes, it is going to take a few sharpens to get there. You may notice that I'm flipping the tool backwards and forwards. I'm trying to use as much of the tool as I can because this is really dense and every time I sharpen, I try to keep it even. So using both sides of the tool allows me to try and dull it evenly. So when I sharpen, I'm not wasting any of the metal. As you can tell from the ghosting up there, we're still not round, but we're definitely getting better. Right now, I've decided to grip my teeth and just try and go straight across. Right now, I believe I've already decided, based on what the wood's telling me, how I want to shape this bowl. And so I have started to try and form it in that direction. And I will continue working towards it. As you saw at the start of the video, it has got quite a nice shape to it. And the round bowl portion is quite lovely. The river she-oak found in New South Wales, sometimes called Casuarina, is an Australian New Guinea lacewood and this specific tree, as I mentioned earlier on, is from Mudgee, New South Wales. The entire river front along the Kajigong is littered with them and they are such a beautiful tree. Some people might be interested in the tool that I'm using. I am using a Crown M42 Cryo 13mm bowl gouge. I believe this is also known as a half inch bowl gouge elsewhere in the world. 
I am using a long grind and that's because I like using the wings as a scraper. As I get closer to round, I am getting a bit excited because it's cutting a lot nicer. Here's a good example of when I'm using it as a scraper. You see those nice long shavings coming off. Then I turn it around and use the nose and then I go back to reshaping. So here I decide to cut in a little bit more and get past that miscut that I had when I was playing with the bandsaw trying to get some of the edge off. As you can see, there's a big flat spot up there with a nice big chunk. It almost looks like I'm going for a closed rim there. I'm not. Just trying to get past it so that I can finalize the shape. Using the wing, trying to bring that edge down a bit more. Now I notice that the wood starts darkening up there. So my tool is both running hot and the wing on that side is starting to get blunt. So I'm gonna give it a guess. So that means I probably need a sharpen. And given the amount of shininess that I'm seeing here, it needs a sharpen. I'll use that wing, give it a little feather out, and then I'm going to go and sharpen. Right here, I'm doing some pull cuts across the face, trying to flatten it out because it was still quite rough and I suspect if I take that down I can really get the speed up a bit more. I'm doing a pass and then I'm stopping and having a look and doing a pass and stopping and having a look. And I finally get to the point where all of my little chainsaw nicks and things that I had sitting in the top are now gone. So now I'm going to mark off a spot for a tenon. First thing I'm going to do is finish trying to clean up that bark inclusion. So bringing that down, then reshaping, making sure I'm still keeping it consistent as to how I'm wanting it. And then I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to take off that little nub. I'm going to get a nice flat face on this and then I'm going to mark it. So I've pulled out the detail spindle gouge here and then I do a couple of little pull cuts across and get a nice flat face. I'm just going to push that up because I still don't trust this thing's not going to fly off. And I push the tool in to mark the tenon. Satisfied with that, I'm now using the detailed spindle gouge just to sharpen up that corner to grab it with the shark jaws. Anyone may notice that color that's coming out. Anyone care to guess what that means? I'll give you a hint. It involves a spinny thing that the tool goes on. There it is. Now, I forgot to record audio on this, so enjoy my reenactment.
So quick sharpen and I can get rid of those black lines. We are currently in five times speed and it feels really slow. I'm just letting the tool cut as it wants to. I'm just slowly working up. Create some black lines, erase the black lines. I'm actually becoming very satisfied with the shape that's coming out of this. proactive with the sharpen this time. Oh, I am getting close to the final shape here of the exterior, so I do try to sharpen so that I can get some really nice cuts. Because all I want is minimal sanding at the end. In my last video, you may have noticed that I was using my power sanding on the Dremel. This time, I'm not. That's because I remembered where my 2-inch disc mount was, and it's sitting under that fluffy thing over there in the Jacob's Chuck. So, before I sand, I decide to backfill all these little bug holes. Now, as you may notice, as the accelerator hits it, it's going very dark, but at the same time, there's some strange lightness to it. This is a phenomenon we call chatoyance. And the medullary rays on this one are very obvious. It's quite a stunning piece. I believe you're really going to enjoy as the finish gets applied. You notice those rich blacks and light browns and almost golden color shimmering as I move it. So the glue up is almost finished and then I'm going to move into sanding. Now. You may notice here that I've got something sitting between my legs. That is a vacuum hose from the two horsepower dust extractor. This is the first time I've ever stuck a vacuum between my legs. Absolutely not going to be the last time. The suction on this was fantastic. It got about 90% of the cell dust uh, some of it still got passed, but it did a lot better than nothing. And again, this is why we wear the respirator, because we need to spare our lungs. So, something funny happened here, and you'll notice that I keep having a look and poking it. and Up on the area around the Mulderry layers... It actually found a soft spot while I was sanding. So I got up to 320 grit and I noticed that I was starting to get some strange tear out. I started having a chat with Sid from Sid's Repurposing and discussing if he'd seen it and how he'd combat it. There's those soft spots now. Um, and we weren't sure what was causing it, but Sid's had the suggestion that it maybe was a soft spot that I hit. So what I did was backfill that with some glue and that fixed it up nicely. So once I put the glue on, I took it back to 80 and then I sand it up to 2000. Most people say don't sand that high, but for me in this specific case, I wasn't trying to get a finish as such. 
I was trying to allow the shine of the Chitoyants to really stand out. And I believe going to a smoother, higher grit has really emphasized that Chitoyants. You be the judge, let me know what you think in the comments. If you're enjoying this content, please like and subscribe. Now's a great time since we're in the sanding portion and we all know sanding is boring. Just on the subject of subscribers, I gave him a shout out two weeks ago, but Sid from Sid's Repurposing has been awesome. He's been reaching out and we've been chatting. He's almost taken me on as a mentoree because I'm not that experienced with turning, but I'm not that new either. And so Sid, having many years experience, is able to see some of the mistakes I'm making and he's actually been able to steer me in the direction to fix some of them as well as end up with some nice products as a result. Part of that has been challenging me with the pen last week and yeah, I've been enjoying that. I've got to go down and finish the one which wasn't the practice pen and once I do that I may do a video on how I edit videos because that's one thing that I've got over Sid of I actually have many years experience with editing photos not so much videos but more photos and editing videos is all new to me but I do understand lighting and how that improves the quality of video so here I am applying the first layer of oil and then buffing it out so this is the same finish as I did on the bowl a couple of weeks back with the claret ash so I do three layers of the chopping board oil and then I burnish in some wax. At this point I really start to notice that golden shine on that corner. So I wanted to try and emphasize that and show it to you because this made me very happy with how much quality is in this wood. So now I'm going to flip the bowl around and I am going to turn it into a bowl. Happy that I'm 90% square and going to continue. I'm still going to bring that tailstock up because this is a bigger bowl and it's still a fairly small tenon for this size bowl. but. In this case, it's not too bad. It actually works out quite nice. As you saw the other week, I like to use the ring method where I use the tip of the tool and I dig in with one wing. Then I come back with the other side and clean it up to start the curvature. Each time getting a little bit more and more deep and eventually getting a nice bowl finish. But again, river she oak is very hard, so I do take it a bit slow and I do sharpen frequently. So this is a real time clip of turning. And as you can see, I'm just poking the nose in, pressing from behind, getting those nice long stringers to fly out. I'm just working it backwards ever so slightly and then I flip the tool around and I do a push cut to get in a bit deeper. You may have heard that little vibration there, it's because I wasn't pressing down on the tool rest hard enough. A lot of the lathe work is listening to what it's telling you because a lot of the time if you're not quite getting it right it will scream or make a specific noise that you can then fix. When I originally started making pens I was wearing headset because pens don't make so much noise but bowls most definitely do. Now 
And now we're gonna go into high speed mode and let's get this done. Right there, I've taken the tail stock off completely. I also went and had lunch and came back out. Just drop the tool rest a little bit because I wasn't able to get rid of that center. And now that I've got that tail stock out of the way, I'm able to swing the tool way over to the right there and get it in a lot straighter. Part of the problem with having a small lathe is that I do have to take the tail stock off completely. I may at some stage in the future look at getting the bed extension just so I don't have to do that. And sharpen, I can't remember how many. It's not the last and it's certainly not the first. As you can tell, I'm just giving it a quick touch up. So I do the wings first, I give them a real good focus, and then it's just a quick rock around the front. Using my guesstimate gauge to see if we're still even the whole way down. center out so that I can go a bit deeper. The risk with having a lot in the center like that is if you hit it, you're probably guaranteed to send the bowl across the room. So it's all about being gentle and being a little bit finessed with where your tool is riding. Understand what you're hitting and where it's going to impact. Now I've noticed here, the video actually looks like my tool is above center. It's actually not, it's just reaching out a long way. And it is... I think just the angle of the camera causing that. But as you can tell, give it a quick go and get rid of that center again. And now I can focus on getting a nice smooth hole shape. You may have noticed there, I jumped over a section. I should go back and fix that up. Now, as I mentioned in the Claret Ash Bowl, I don't like coming up the side once I've taken the center out. Because that can cause much worse issues. I've got quite a flat spot there, so I try and take it out. I really wanted to get this as close to perfect as I could, and I'm pretty satisfied with it. So before I go into sanding, I'm just going to try and touch up these bug holes. As you can tell, there is quite a few of them.
one up on the rim, which I will sort out while sanding. Now, at this stage, I am satisfied with how the bowl is coming together. So I am going to move into sanding. I started with some 80 grit. I realized I was getting absolutely nowhere. And so I jumped over to some 40 grit. So I grabbed some 40 grit. I put some foam inside it to try and take out some of the heat. Yes, you don't really want heat while sanding. But at the same time, I also wanted to sand. I've now jumped straight towards a couple of grits up higher. And you'll notice the shine really starting to come out. Again, just like the exterior, I sanded 2000 grit. Applying the finish like I did before. And as you can tell, that color has already shifted. So I did three coats of oil and then I put some beeswax on. Right now I'm just getting rid of the excess and then I move in to burnishing in the beeswax. I didn't capture while I was putting the wax on. So I'm sorry about that, but the wax is now on and here is that beautiful finish. Now, turning it back around, I am resting this on a tennis ball. I should have stopped as soon as I noticed that, and I didn't. Whew, that was a close one. Take two. And I clearly didn't learn the first time. And as you can hear, I'm starting to get frustrated at myself. Because silly mistakes are avoidable and I didn't learn. So taking the tenon down now, as you can tell, it's still not rotating perfectly. doing a lot better than what it was but now we're gonna walk the walk and as you can hear very annoyed with myself all right so now let's get back into it and this time I actually do get the little nub off I then sand the bottom I didn't record it because I was very frustrated with myself so the recording stops with the nub being removed and then we're going to move in to some final photos. If you're enjoying this, please consider liking and subscribing. So I've decided here that I'm not going to risk it any further and I am going to sand it out and I did not record that. Moving into these photos where you can see those rich browns and the lace. And yeah, I really hope you enjoy this bowl as much as I do. This has been a Mudgy River Shioke and thank you very much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed it.